Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating a case number using SPSS. So I have here fictitious data in the data editor in SPSS. And you can see I have an ID variable in this data set. And I have two independent variables and a dependent variable. And let's assume that when this data was entered, I did not have an ID. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this. So I just have the two independent variables and the dependent variable, but I don't have an ID or case number associated with these records. And I want to include a case number that was the same as the one I just had in there for ID, which started with 1001. And the case of this data set ended with 1120. So to create a case number, we can use what SPSS refers to as a system variable. So if we go to transform, compute variable, and we look over to the right under function group and select all, you can see that the first few functions have a dollar sign in front of them. These are SPSS system variables. And the first one is case number. So if I move case number, over to numeric expression and then I type in a target variable I'll just call this ID and for type and label I want to make sure this is numeric and not string then click OK and you can see that we have 1 through 120 so we have a case number but it's not in the format that I wanted. I want it to be 1001 through 1120. So I'm going to go back to transform and compute variable. I'm just going to call this target variable ID2. So I'm going to create a new variable ID2 and again it's going to be numeric. And this time instead of the numeric expression reading dollar sign case number I'm going to put in 1000 plus dollar sign case number. Then click OK. And moving back to the data editor, you can see now it is formatted the way I wanted. 1001 for the first record and 1120 for the last record. But I don't want the decimal point in the zeros, so I go to the variable view under ID2 for decimals, you can see here it reads 2. I'm just going to change that to 0. Moving back to data view, now you can see the decimal and the two zeros do not appear in the display. So at this point, I can delete the original variable I created, ID, by right clicking and clicking on clear. And you can see the ID created using the dollar sign case number function appears as the variable all the way to the right. If I go to variable view, I can just move that to the top. And then when I move back to the data view, it's going to appear where the original ID number appeared. And of course I can also change the name. This is ID2 from variable view. I can just delete the two and change that name to ID. So now I have the 1001 through the 1120, the ID number, the way I originally had it. Now I want to go back for a second to transform and compute variable to make you aware of a limitation or property of the dollar sign case number function. As you can see in the description here, it gives you current case sequence number. If you look down a bit here, you can see that it's not necessarily the row number in the data editor, and the value changes if the file is sorted or new cases are inserted for the end of the file. So before you put in an ID variable using this function, make sure that you have all the other variables entered into the data set and that there's no other sorting that's required. 
if the particular circumstances would make doing that inconvenient and you still want to create an ID you could always move to Excel and type in 1001 and 1002 and then autofill all the way down to 1120 and then copy that entire range and paste it into an empty variable here and then from the variable view just rename it and that way when you sort or add new variables you won't have the same problem as you would with the system variable dollar sign case number. So this function to quickly create the case number can be useful in a majority of the circumstances but there may be certain situations when you're not done sorting or adding variables to the data set where it might be better to use Excel and copy and paste the ID variable over. I hope you found this video on creating a case number using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.